Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. Today we're going to take a look at a kind of an iconic piece. Um, this is a Ruger built copy of the 1873 Colt Peacemaker. Uh, this was the, you know, the one you saw in a John Wayne Westerns and all that. Um, it's six shot revolver. Um, this particular gun is what we call single action. Okay. What is the difference between single action and double action? Well, I'll show you. With single action, okay, only one action happens per pull of the trigger. When you pull the trigger, the only action that's going to happen is that that hammer is going to fall. So that is a single action on that trigger. You pull the trigger once, the hammer falls. It won't won't fall again. You can pull the trigger all day long and nothing's going to happen. Okay? That's single action. This is my old Model 10 Smith & Wesson. This is the first gun I was ever issued when I was in the department. Okay? This gun, two actions can take place. The hammer for one pull. The hammer will go back and it will go forward. Okay? So it goes back and forward with one pull of the trigger. That's two actions, back and forward. Uh, back in the day when they were making westerns when I was a kid, the ones that were black and white, um, you'd see these guys, they'd shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, and you'd never see them reload, and they'd get, you know, 50, 60 rounds <laughs> out of a six-shot revolver. Uh, it was kind of entertaining, but uh, not very realistic. So, um, there were some things I wanted to show you about these guns. Um, that are kind of important. Now, I bought this gun second hand, and when I got it, the frame was pretty rusted up. Um, it looked pretty bad. So what I ended up doing was, uh, it was in such bad shape, I ended up sanding it down and polishing the frame. And it looked so good in bright metal with that two-tone, I decided I'd just leave it like that. Um, that's not the important thing I wanted to show you. So let's get on to the important thing I'm gonna take the grips off of this and show you a modification that somebody has done to this gun I'm not sure how I feel about it whenever you modify something uh, particularly something like a trigger spring or, or anything like that um, you're kind of messing with the safety of the gun a little bit um, I don't think this is a huge threat but in this particular case but the legal part of it is that you end up taking responsibility at least in part for uh, this gun okay now the spring in question okay I hope I can get this to where you can see it okay is right across here it goes from between that metal pin right there and it goes up around through here now this is the trigger return spring okay there are supposed to be two wires on the opposite side of the gun somebody has gone in and cut one of those wires to soften the trigger pull on this gun and it, it is a pretty pretty comfortable trigger for me but it does make the gun a little bit more ticklish on the trigger where you don't have to pull the trigger very hard to drop the hammer okay so I'm not so sure I like that idea of, of dropping the trigger pull on this to that point uh, it's pretty light it's I'd say it's under six pounds so that's 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 on the light side but so we're going to go through this gun now and I'm going to show you some interesting things about the gun all right so we're going to check the chambers which I did earlier but we're going to do it again so when you're unloading this gun okay there is a rod right here you put your finger on that rod you line the chamber up with the loading and inject and ejection port you push that rod back and that rod literally pushes the cartridge case 
right out of the cylinder, okay? You advance it to the next cylinder and do it again. And you unload all six chambers that way. All right. And that's how you unload the gun. Loading it, you just stick them in the hole. It's not a big deal, okay? Uh, let's say you want to take the gun apart. Well, right here is a little button, okay? You push that button in and you grab this pin right here underneath and you pull it straight forward and the cylinder drops right out through that open loading gate. If the loading gate is closed, it won't drop out. It'll hold it in place. So you've got to have that loading gate open. When you want to put it back together, simply drop it through the hole into the same place and push that pin back through until it goes click. Once it goes all the way back, you may have to manipulate the cylinder to get it to go all the way in. But once you get it all the way up against the stop, it's reassembled. It's a very simple gun. It's very straightforward. Uh, it's a very nice piece. There's just not a lot to it. So I just thought you might be interested in the Colt or the Ruger copy of the Colt Peacemaker. Um, as far as oiling it is concerned, again, very, very simple. Um, you have a pin right here that the hammer is on, okay? Excuse me, okay? Um, that pin is going to need a little bit of oil, so you're going to want to run a little bit of oil down past the hammer to that, to that pin, okay? This gun, okay, this um, Ruger copy of the Colt Peacemaker has what they call a transfer bar ignition, okay? Let's see if I can improve the light a little bit. This bar right through here is sticking up in here, all right? That is the transfer bar. The hammer hits that bar and pushes it into the firing pin. The firing pin goes in and sets off the cartridge, okay? Unless you are holding the trigger back that bar drops back down out of the way as the hammer comes down, okay? Which I did a lousy job of showing you, okay? But as that hammer drops down, that transfer bar moves back out of the way so that it can't hit the firing pin, so it won't go off. This gun with the transfer bar ignition is safe to have rounds in all six chambers. If you have the old style that has the hammer spur sticking out on, on this side, the, the firing pin sticking out on this side of the hammer, always keep one chamber empty. And it's, it's not going to kill you to keep a chamber empty on this one. Okay? So it's probably a good safety technique just to keep the top chamber empty so that you can't get any slam fires on the back of that hammer. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You clean this thing about like you do any other gun. The only thing I would say is that first thing you got to do is to drop the cylinder out of it. All right, okay. And again, you're going to need your cleaning solvent. You're going to need your gun oil. And you're going to need some cleaning patches. Okay, so... I guess we'll run a few and show you how it goes. It's pretty simple. Uh, you're going to need the proper size jag. Now this particular gun shoots the 45 long Colt cartridge. So we're going to put our 45 caliber jag on here. Now the 45 comes in a whole bunch of different types of cartridge. This one is specifically the 45 Long Colt, okay? There's a 45 Schofield, there's a 45 ACP, there are several, in other words. So, uh, 45 Long Colt's a very pleasant round to shoot. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, hurt to pull the trigger on it. It's just a nice, nice round. All right, so, cleaning this is just like any other. You mount your, ja your patch on your jag, Okay, well, you got to wet it first with your solvent. 
Okay. Mounted on your jag. And clean each of each one of your individual chambers. Okay. Now I'm gonna start with the bore. I'm gonna go right down the barrel. Okay. Now there was a little bit of dirt in this one, so I'm glad we're cleaning her up. Okay. All right. Now we're going to run a dry patch down the board. turn around inside out and do the other side again and the patch is coming out pretty clean so I think we got it pretty good on the inside of that barrel we're going to inspect it and I'm going to show you how to do that if you try to look just look down the barrel you're not going to see much it's very dark down that barrel as you can see you can see a little bit but not much. Now what happens, we can take one of these nice bright white cleaning patches and we can use it as a reflector and you can see how much better you can see down that barrel. So just by putting a white patch behind it you can light the barrel so you can inspect and that's what I'm going to do now. And that barrel looks flawlessly clean. It's beautiful. Love it. Okay. So We're also going to clean our chambers. We have six chambers, so three patches will do the job. Um, I use a double nap flannel patch, okay? In other words, it has fuzziness on both sides of the patch. Okay, single nap flannel only has fuzziness on one side of the patch, the other side doesn't. So, let's get our patch wet, and we're going to use one side of the patch for each chamber, okay? So, that's one. Now, we're going to turn the patch inside out and use the other side of the patch. Now, I'm leaving the rod in the hole that I just cleaned so I keep track of where I am, all right? So now we're going to take that side and push it through the very next chamber. That's this one here. Okay, now that's two of them. Okay. So we have cleaned all six chambers. Now on this one, you can just kind of look right through it and see through those chambers pretty well. So if you want to use the patch to reflect light up into it, that's fine, but I don't think it's strictly necessary on the, cha on the chambers. So we also want to make sure that the front and back sides of this cylinder have been cleaned, all right? Because you will get carbon and burnt powder residue will build up in all kinds of little nooks and crannies. You want to make sure that right in here, in this area of the barrel and the frame, that you want to get things cleaned up in there as well. Okay, again, you build up, uh, even lead deposits actually get shaved off the sides of the bullet and end, end up finding their way into everything in this area. So you want to try and get this all as clean as you can too. All right. Um, I'm going to take my cleaning brush to it. All right. And make sure we're as clean as we can get.
Okay. Alright, that looks pretty good. Okay. So, as far as oiling it is concerned, again, not a complicated process. This is a steel frame and a blued steel barrel. So, we are going to want to make sure that we run an oil patch down this barrel. Okay, we want a coat of oil inside the barrel to make sure that we don't get any rust buildup in the rifling of our barrel. So the way we're going to handle that is you can mount the patch first or you can just squirt the oil on it. But you need the patch to have oil. Now I'm going to recommend that we also run an oily patch down those chambers as well. But before we do that, we're going to have to dry them with a dry patch. Now, since we've already dried the barrel, we don't need to run a dry patch on that. So, get on there, you. There it went. So we run our patch, oily patch, right down the barrel. And we kind of push it through. And that will put a coating of oil down the inside of that barrel where we want it. So what I think I'm going to show you now is the same thing I showed you before and that is that um, when you're doing these chambers Make sure you keep track of which one you've done and which one you haven't. Okay, so and we've still got a good bit of oil on this patch and I think we're going to be fine using it on at least a couple of these chambers. Now will give us a decent coat of oil in there. And it's starting to get a little dry, so we'll get another oily patch. Or we'll just turn it inside out and add a little more oil, I guess. Another one and finish those chambers off. And this is the last chamber. Now, when you've oiled the inside of these chambers and you look down in there, you'll see a nice sheen on the inside of those cylinders. It's going to show you that you got them oiled. Okay, so. There are some places in the gun that are going to need some oil. Okay, there's a pin that goes through here that, uh, the that goes through the trigger. So we're going to put a little drop of oil here and another one here. Now this oil is like a penetrating oil, so it will seek where it needs to get to to oil all these spots. Now we're going to put some oil on the spring here that runs the trigger in case that's, that gets a lot of wear on it. I don't think it's going to snap anytime soon, but it's possible. So we put the oil on it. All right. Okay. So I'm going to stick this down inside where that spring is and get some oil around that pin. Okay. We're also going to get some right in here where the strut comes up and pushes on the hammer and a little bit on both sides of the hammer between the hammer and the frame. Okay, and work it a little bit so it goes in. All right, and we also want to get this rod, the ejection rod, we want to get that cleaned up, okay, and oiled. We also want to get the rod that supports the cylinder. So I'm going to start with a cylinder rod here, get some oil on it, okay, and I'm just going to push it in a little bit. I say that and it's not moving. 
Okay, come on, get in there, you. All right, just to get that oil spread through there. All right, so that's through there. Okay, now inside the gun, right here, this is the push paw that comes up and advances the cylinder, okay, and makes the cylinder turn. So we're going to want a little drop of oil in there. Get in there. You, there we go. Work that a little bit. We're want, going to want a little drop of oil right here in our loading gate to make sure that it works properly. All right. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put the cylinder back in the gun. But before I do that, I want to put a little bit of oil on the gear back here that that push paw hits and advances our cylinder. Because that's kind of a high traffic area. There's a lot of wear there, okay? All right, so... And drop our cylinder in through that loading gate. All right, got to kind of get it, mess with it a little bit to get through it. And then we're going to get our cylinder lined up and get our pin pushed all the way back in. Again, you may have to fidget with the cylinder a little bit to get it to go, but you'll hear it click once it's all the way in, once that pin gets pushed all the way back, okay? And from there, Nope, got to close the loading gate. Sorry. Once that loading gate is open, you can't cock the gun. It won't let you. Okay, so we're going to run it a few times. And that works all that oil into all those places. Okay? Now, somehow, there's a little piece of paper. Looks like it got caught down in here that we're going to get out. And we're going to run a little bit of oil up this little light spring that's in here. And again, it doesn't take a lot. Now, what I'm going to do on mine, since this metal is bright metal on this frame, is I'm going to just take a little bit of oil and I'm going to wipe it all over that bare metal so that it doesn't rust. All right? It don't take much. Just a little bit. And you can rub that a long way. Now, I'm actually going to wipe the gun off a little bit after that because it's going to be a little bit slippery and I don't really want it to be slippery but I'm putting that oil on it to preserve it for now what I'm going to do is in one of my upcoming videos I'm going to feature a silicon rag now that silicon rag uh, is very useful in situations like this because it puts a, a um, coating of silicon over the top of it so that it prevents the gun from rusting so, as far as putting these grips are back on, or grip, as far as putting the grips back on the gun are concerned, the only thing you really need to be concerned about is this little hole right here has to line up with that pin on this corner, and the front goes up into place up there. So once it's lined up, it'll just drop right into place. We put the other side on in the same fashion. Okay, and once it's in place, we take our screw, we drop it through the grip, and we tighten it up. Now, you don't have to keep cranking on this thing all day, okay? Get it snugged up, and that's it. You don't have to go any more than that. If you tighten these things too tight, you can crack the grips. You can also pull these little inserts right out of the wood. So don't over tighten that grip screw. All right, that's all there is to that gun. Okay, that is the Ruger copy of the 1873 Colt Peacemaker. Hey everybody, Bill1911 here. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, don't forget to like us and please subscribe. And by all means, come to visit us at askbill1911.com. Also, I want to talk to you about something that's very important to us, and that's your safety. So please, don't try any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. 
If you are under 18 years of age, do not try any of these topics without the express permission of your parent or guardian. Thank you.